Hello everyone and welcome to a really amazing game from yesterday's new in chess classic, uh, not finals, but uh, from the clash for third place. It's Levon Arnon versus Shakhtar Mamedyarov and while Magnus and uh, Hikaru were battling it out for first place, uh, Levon and Mamedyarov had to uh, brawl it out to see who will clinch third place. And this is uh, one of the games that was played. Uh, there were uh, a lot of amazing games, uh, but... Um, uh, I'm only one person, I can only cover so many, and uh, well, as uh, the other match was the finals, uh, I decided to cover that one uh, mostly, but of course I will uh, show a game from this match as well, and uh, this game, I don't know, I went through all of the games, and this one is just, uh, well, pure perfection, uh, so to say, uh, I, uh, you will see, like, uh, there is nothing that can be better in this game uh, for it to be more perfect, for, for the winning side, I'm not saying that anyone won, but, uh, you know, uh, could, could be that uh, someone has uh, and uh, well uh, I'd just like to hear your opinion as well because this is, uh, it, it couldn't have uh, been played any better so without further, further ado, 11 with the white pieces uh, opens with e4 uh, we have uh, c5, Mamidaro goes for the Sicilian defense, we have knight to f3, e6, and now d4. Striking in the center, we have c, captures knight, captures, and knight to f6. And if, you, uh, if you've noticed, I did some redecorating, I've added some... Uh, some uh, foam uh, that uh, should prevent echo uh, or is it maybe reverb uh, so the sound should be better in this video but if it's still not okay uh, I still have some extra foam left so I can use that as well so do uh, mention maybe if uh, if it's an improvement uh, to, the pr to the previous video because to me it is but I know most of you guys are probably using headphones to listen to this so uh, I'm, I would be very interested um, in your opinion as I've never used this stuff so hopefully hopefully it works uh, so knight to f6, we have knight to c3, and now knight to c6, uh, going for the four knights variation of the Sicilian, uh, we have knight captures b, captures, of course black will capture with the b pawn, he wants to strike in the center, uh, and now white prevents this by pushing e5, the knight is under attack, we have knight to d5 offering a trade of knights, and while white could trade here, this is perfectly fine for black, nothing, uh, you know, uh, yes, you, you do have doubled pawns, but you can always just push this one and exchange it for this one one and your, your center will be, uh, well, uh, perfectly fine. So instead we have knight to e4 by Levon uh, and now queen to c7, taking care of that d6 square as the knight might have some ideas here. Uh, now the e5 point is under attack, so we have f4 and now comes rook to b8. Makes sense, there's a semi-open b file, so why not use it for the rook? Uh, even though the most played move here is queen to b6, but uh, Mamidyar prepared something very nice. So rook to b8 and now a3, taking away the b4 square. Uh, from black's pieces, we have queen to b6 now, putting a lot of pressure along the b-file, but also just uh, controlling this entire diagonal, which is... Uh uh, which is uh, uh, an, an amazing one, and it's usually the one that black tends to use uh, uh, in, in, in such uh, positions. So here we have queen to f3, uh, developing the queen, and now there is one game where uh, queen to a5 check was played, but here we have bishop to e7, and it is already as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So let's see. Uh, how Mamidyar, uh, sorry, how Levon deals with this. Uh, he pushes c4, and c4 is uh, is a great move as it dislodges the knight from this uh, uh, position here. Uh, but moving the knight uh, basically wins the game for white, and it's uh, so crazy. I'm just going to show it to you very quickly. The knight has to go somewhere, and you don't really have any squares other than, for example, knight to c7. But then you get knight to d6 check, captures, captures. The knight has to move once again, and after let say knight to a6, you're gonna play queen to c3. Put pressure on g7, and one black, once black takes care of this by either playing f6 or castles, castles does uh, appear to be more natural. Now we play b4, and incredible as it is, this is uh, this is winning for white. Uh, the problem is c5 is coming, and if you get this c5 in, then this pawn chain is just uh, unstoppable. It completely destroys the black's entire position, and there is no playing this. So black would be forced to play something like c5, and the white, of course, just pushes b5 here and wins the knight. So that's uh, basically uh, the idea uh, behind c4 and uh, you know uh, is there anything Mamidarov can do here to prevent such a, such a devastating loss uh, of course there is as I've already mentioned this is a perfect game so here f5 uh, counter attacking with an attack on this knight so what do you do here uh, well now you you kind of don't want to play this captures uh, because black would just capture on e4 and after queen captures now we're going to play e captures on d5 and all of a sudden uh, black's position 
is just uh, just excellent. You're gonna castle kingside here. You're, you're gonna have a nice rook on the open f file. The queen cutting uh, off uh, this diagonal completely. The bishop can also join the party. Uh, you can't really develop this bishop because the b2 pawn would be hanging. So it would be terrible to play this with uh, with white. So instead, after this um, uh, f5 move, we don't have a trade, but rather just. Uh, uh, knight back to d2 and knight to d2 is where the perfection starts knight to f2 is white's last hope here uh, knight to d6 also playable but knight to f2 may be a better retreat if you already want to retreat your knight uh, but knight to d2 simply doesn't work and uh, because the bishop uh, no longer guards the e3 square and this is a huge problem the queen and knight will now do some serious damage although it's not um uh, not right away clear, uh, knight to e3 is played, now threatening knight to c2 check, which would of course win the rook on a1. So bishop to d3, not a problem, 11 is thinking I'm just going to move the knight and then this knight will be just weirdly placed here. Uh, but now Mamedyarov doesn't play something like castles and goes for a safe move, uh, rather g5 now. And now what do you play here? It's a really, really tough position to be in with white because uh, the move that Levon was most likely planning, something like knight to f1 uh, to kick away this knight or simply to trade everything off, uh, would be would be playable. But then, for example, just knight captures on f1, rook captures and g captures on f4. And again, it's black. Black's the one who's attacking. Even queen to h5 check doesn't really do anything. You're just going to move the king and your king is perfectly safe here. There are so many pawns here. You can put your king on c7. Uh, it's not a problem. And if something like rook captures on f4, uh, then we get this queen to g1 check. Attacking the pawn, if bishop to f1 guarding this, now we're going to play rook captures on b2, and white's position is very, very much uh, unplayable. If bishop captures, then we're just going to deliver check, pick up this rook, uh, and uh, you know just enjoy a better position. If queen e2, for example, captures, and um, it's a better position for black. Black is also up a pawn. So this is what happens uh, if uh, white decides to do something like this so without the knight to f1 move you really don't have a, a good continuation so here g3 was played now just adding another defender but now Mamidyarov uh, finds a way how to how to do things properly g captures on f4 we have g captures on f4 and now rook to g8 again the absolute strongest move recommended by the engine and uh Pretty much, I think I think all of the moves Mamedyarov played so far uh, were the absolute strongest recommended by the engine. Uh, so rook to g8, and now knight to f1, now uh, hoping to get some trades in, but now uh, Mamedyarov doesn't care. He just plays knight to g2 with check. We have king to e2, and now comes queen to d4. And what do you play here? Uh, not a lot. Uh, if you if you attack the queen with something like bishop here, uh, it's really pointless. Just queen captures on b2, and other than that, you really don't have a good move. Uh, Levin played the absolute strongest move uh, recommended by the engine, but even this is is nowhere near enough to, to survive this attack because now, okay, the rook is no longer guarding the knight. You are threatening to pick it up with the queen. Uh, but it's uh, it's all over. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and win this game for Mamedyarov while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this uh, amazing idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook captures on B2 with check. And now there really isn't a good move. If you don't capture this, then what what can you even play? There's really not, not much to play. If you just move the king, for example, king f1, rook b3, that's, uh, I mean, that's game. There's really no... Uh, no playing this. You, you could play something like king captures on g2, then rook captures on d3 comes, and uh, well, uh, there's still the rook, there's still the bishop pair. The bishop pair will, will uh, be activated very soon, and it's, uh, well, it's uh, simply an un un unplayable position. The rook on a1 is hanging. I mean, it, it, it's just crazy. So instead, after rook captures on b2, 11 captured on b2, but now it's pretty much the same. Just queen captures on b2 with check. King to f1, and here, amazing as it is, uh, uh, here he didn't go for rook captures on a1 and allow something like king captures here he just played knight to h4 and it was in this position on move 21 uh, that uh, Levon Aronian resigned the game and what an amazing amazing game for Shakhtar Mamedyarov who uh, basically played a perfect game here I, I don't know how much of it was preparation how much was uh, you know moves found over the board but regardless this this is a perfect game with the black pieces and uh, Levon uh, did not make any all that uh, you know uh, 
Uh, he didn't make any serious mistake, but uh, it was at this point when he retreated to d2, he simply allowed this knight to come to e3. And it's it's all, it, it's all it's a very tricky position, but uh, allowing this knight to come to e3 was a deadly mistake. Uh, so yeah, after this uh, uh, knight to h4, he resigns because now there's really nothing he can do because the rook here is hanging and you don't really have a good way of defending this because your queen on f3 is hanging as well. And if you try something, you could try rook b1 to try and trade pieces off, uh, but we're just going to capture it. And then after bishop captures, pick up the queen. And if you look uh, closely, uh, black is up a full piece. So this is, of course, unplayable. And on the other hand, if you don't do something like that, you could play queen d1, maybe try and guard the rook, but it's it doesn't matter just queen g2 check and we uh okay the, the rook here on h1 is defended but after king one knight f3 check and the king has no squares you would have to give up the queen and that's it queen captures on f3 and that's game over so really really uh, an amazing game uh by mamidarov it all, all all it took was one bad move with the knight and it's often said that a move with the knight back is the strongest move but here uh, it was it was most definitely not okay if it was knight f2 then yes but not knight to d2 and uh regarding the result the first match between the two of them so all four games ended with a, uh, <laughs> a decisive result and all four games were won by the black pieces and uh, in the second match uh, the, the second day uh, uh, again uh, all of the games that were won were won with the black pieces so Mamidyarov on the second day won two games with the black pieces one of them ended in a draw and this was enough for him to clinch the match. So it was, uh, in fact, Shakhtar Mamidyarov who who, who uh, won third place in this new chess classic uh, by defeating uh, such a, such an amazing player like like Levon Aronian. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Really, uh, and uh, uh, really, it's hard to even explain how how amazing this game is. I hope I did, uh, you know, at least. Um, uh, a little bit of a, a decent job uh, providing some uh, intel on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ricardo Rolfs, uh, Ferenc Hanvai, uh, Happy Birthday Mina, uh, Simon Heat, and Meadow Fan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do comment if the sound is at least a little bit better than in the previous video, if this foam is even doing anything. Uh, see you soon.